AdSense not to erase anything from here, delete any files from an external hard drive. Well, we can just highlight them and we can press Command Delete. We can also right click and we can move to trash. That's an option. Then we can just empty our trash. We always need to empty our trash before ejecting our external hard drive. So make sure to do that, by the way. And here we go. So you should see something like this, empty trash, and that way it's completely gone from there. But anyways, that would be for an external SSD. Now let me show you for an external hard drive, if you've got external hard drive. So we're gonna do that format next. Let me just close this up, go back to disk utility, and let's just go for that option. So for an external hard drive, you just go into Erase, and this time we're gonna choose Mac OS Extended Journaled. Now if you choose this, this is really good if you want Time Machine, plus if you just want to use it, like the way I, we just used it, you can just copy and paste stuff to it, you could do that. And we can just leave it as Mac OS Extended Journaled, that's just gonna work for Macs. So if you don't care about PCs, you don't, really want to deal with that stuff, just choose this, go ahead, erase, and you're good to go. However, if you want this to work with Mac and PC, then you want to go with XFAT, your last option. So that's this last option. This will work with Windows and Mac. So I can go ahead and choose that. I can name this whatever I like, erase, and then I can do exactly what I just showed you a couple seconds ago, the exact same thing, copy and paste stuff into it without any problem. So that's the most simple form of using your external hard drive, using it like a big USB drive where you just copy files over and just delete them from your Mac. However, if you wanna use Time Machine, which is something that's pre-built into your Mac, and what Time Machine does is backs up everything. It does an actual backup of everything from your Mac, your programs, your files, everything, pictures, videos, then what I would personally recommend is splitting up your external hard drive. So I'm gonna teach you what that means and how you can get the most out of your external hard drive or SSD. So as always, we're gonna choose this option, just make sure it's partitioned, and then we're gonna just select journal. Don't worry, we're gonna go into XFAT as well. And before I keep going, I do wanna mention that if you guys don't wanna bother with Time Machine, you're pretty much done with the tutorial and you're good to go if you just wanna end it right now. You don't have to watch this part. It's just a little bit more advanced for those of you who just wanna make your lives a lot easier to back up all your files from your Mac to your external hard drive. So again, we're just gonna start up with journaled partition map and we're just gonna name this, well, it doesn't really matter at this point. We're just gonna name it Mac and that's it. We are gonna just erase it. Erasing, by the way, doesn't take that long. If you get any errors, just try again, make sure it's partitioned, journaled. Especially if you're trying to do anything like XFAT, sometimes you get errors, don't worry about it, just try it again, you should be okay. But usually you get only errors when you're doing this if a program's trying to use your external hard drive for something. So right now we're done with this, let's just press okay. Then up here, we're gonna go into partition. So this is our second option. So partitioning is really cool because you're kind of making your external hard drive to be more external hard drives. You're dividing it into parts so you can use each part for what specific things you want. So if it's a really big external hard drive such as this one, 18 terabytes, it's quite big, 18,000 gigs. Well, you want to most likely partition it. So first of all, see this plus sign down, down here below? Just press on it. We're gonna press on it twice. So that way it divides external hard drive into three parts. Do not touch this. See where this says size? Don't touch that. If you wanna change the size and how much space you're giving each part, just move these things around. See these circles? Yep, just move them around. So you can just click on it, hold, and then move this around to give whatever part of the external hard drive more space. So in this case, I'm gonna, let's say, and this might what I suggest doing, I'm gonna leave the biggest part. So when I click on my biggest part, I'm gonna make sure it's journaled. I'm gonna name it Time Machine actually, because this is what I want. And this is what I suggest you guys doing too. So Time Machine, again, it's gonna back up our entire Mac. It's awesome. I do have a video that explains everything about Time Machine. Anyways, we just did this, Time Machine, Mac OS extended. Let's just click on another part. So this part right here, I'm gonna actually make this part that I called Mac, I'm gonna call it Windows. And that's because this part, I'm gonna make it compatible with Windows. So I'm gonna choose XFAT. And then we have one last portion, which is this one right here. So I'm gonna click on it, 
I'm going to choose this one to say Mac backup and I'm going to choose journal because this is just for Mac. Now for those of you using SSD, yes, you want APFS and external hard drives going to journal. By the way, an SSD, you can also choose journal. It's no problem. It's going to work just fine, but it's recommended to use APFS because it works a little bit better. Again, that's if you have an SSD. Right now, we're just going to leave it as journal. We can actually click on any other part just to make sure everything's good. So everything has been applied. It automatically applies as long as you click somewhere else. So as long as I click on another volume, there we go. So right now it's split up into three parts. And so this makes sense. I have to go ahead and apply it to show you what I'm doing and what's happening. So let's just apply it. And then this is a good thing that it's giving you a warning. So because that's exactly what we're doing. We're erasing everything from within the external hard drive. So any data that's inside of it, whether there's files or anything, we're going to delete those things, which again, it's a setup video, so it doesn't matter. Let's just go ahead and tap on partition. So here we go. It's going to partition. So it's going to split up our external hard drive in three parts. And I'm going to teach you how to set up time machine plus explain the other parts and why I made them. So there we go. Finally, it has done what it needs to do. Click on done. And here are my th three partitions. And the biggest one is my time machine. Mac backup is pretty big and Windows, I left it pretty small. What does that mean? Well, you're going to see what that means here on the side. Remember these guys? I used to have only one. Right now, it shows as three separate external hard drives, although it's just one. Here are the three partitions. So let me just explain really quick why I made three. Well, Windows, if I open it up, I'm going to transfer any files that I want to transfer between any Windows laptop and my Mac in here. So again, I'm just using this part of it just to transfer files between my Mac and a PC. Now, Time Machine, the other hand, we're going to set that up in just a second. So I'm going to show you what that is. And Mac Backup, well, that's where I'm going to throw any files that I want to keep forever and get rid of them from my Mac. So if there's any big videos or something or a bunch of files that are taking up too much space on my Mac, I would just throw them in here, delete them from my Mac. I'm good to go. But hey, if you're running out of storage, you got to do what you got to do. And now let's take a look at Time Machine. So let's go back into this utility. We're going to close it off. And I want you guys to look for system preferences. So this is how system preferences looks like. And if you can't find it down there on the top left hand side of your screen, you're going to see that Apple logo. Click on it. Second option, system preferences. Under system preferences, you're going to notice on the bottom, it's going to say time machine. So yes, it's something pre-built into your Mac and it's awesome. So let's just click on it. And this is something that you guys might not see on your Mac. Well, actually, you won't see on your Mac because you don't have Time Machine set up. I already have one Time Machine set up with another external hard drive, and that's why I have it here. However, what we want is to select a new disk. And that's all you guys are going to see. Just select disk. So go ahead, click on select disk. We're going to choose from available disks. So in this case, we have the one that we named Time Machine. So we're going to click on there, then click on use disk. And this is something that you will not see because I have another time machine set up so I can go ahead and use both. It's going to prepare my time machine. And then down here, while that's preparing, I want to show you two more check marks that you should have put on this check mark to show time machine in menu bar. And I suggest making your backups automatically. So put a check mark there as well. So right now you should be able to see your time machine right here. So what does time machine do? Well, actually, I'm going to take off the check mark for back automatically. I don't want that to do that right now. But basically what Time Machine does, it backs up your entire files. So it's going to back up all my files from today. And let's say tomorrow I delete a certain file. I can go back in Time Machine and retrieve that file. However, once Time Machine becomes too full, so let's say I took up those 10 terabytes that I have of Time Machine. There's no more space in Time Machine. It's actually going to start deleting old backups and making that way it has enough space to make new backups. So that's how Time Machine works because it makes a backup every single day of all your files. So even files that you made today, if you made a Time Machine backup today, it will back those up and let's say tomorrow you delete them, you could actually retrieve them from Time Machine because you already backed them up. And that's why what Time Machine needs to do once it gets too full is delete old backups. 
And that's why I told you guys to make this other partition where it says Mac Backup and just drag and drop any files that you want to keep forever in there. And why you may want Time Machine is actually to keep a backup, a constant backup of your Mac. Just in case it ever crashes on you or anything like that, you could literally take your external hard drive, hook it up to a brand new Mac and transfer all your information and everything's gonna be just as it was on your old Mac. So I'm talking about software, everything, even your background, your desktop, how it looked like, your layout, the way that you organize your files in Finder, everything basically will be backed up in Time Machine. So that's why I personally suggest to always, always set up Time Machine. But of course you don't have to, you can just go the easy way and just drag and drop whatever files you need into your Mac backup. But if you also want a backup of all your apps from your Mac and everything else, without you having to drag and drop anything, then just set up Time Machine as well. Quick note, don't worry if your Time Machine disk does not look like this. It could be another color. It could stay yellow like the other ones. It doesn't really matter. As long as you have it added here, then you're good to go. And remember I told you to add this show Time Machine menu bar? Well, that means that your Time Machine is all the way up here. So let me just scroll, click on it. I can see my latest Time Machine backup and I can click on backup now. So if you guys want to back this up right now, go ahead and click on it and then just let it run throughout the night if you have a lot of files. Anyways, hopefully this video made sense for you guys. And again, don't overthink your external hard drive. Just think of it as a big, big USB drive where you can just drag and drop files into it. And if you follow this video, you'll avoid any problems that you will have if you use the software that comes pre-built into your external hard drive or SSD. Anyways, as far as this video goes, we're all done. If you guys have any comments, questions, you guys can write down here in the comments area. Don't forget to subscribe and rate. Thank you.